Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our lesson this morning, our text for the sermon from 1 Samuel, is kind of an exciting thing because it kicks off, even in the whole Bible, who the prophets and what the prophets function really, what they really were and what they are today. So we have Samuel, and we know this story about Samuel. We know the story about uh, Samuel working in the temple, Eli's the priest. I'm sorry, it wasn't the temple. Um, and the temple hadn't been built yet. Uh, and working for Eli. And God comes and calls to Samuel three times. You know, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel, like all the rest of us, is thinking that this is, you know, Eli's calling, he's got a job for me to do. And three times Samuel goes to Eli and says, you know, yes, I'm here, you called me. And Eli said, you know, I didn't call you, but Eli catches on what's going on. And Eli tells Samuel, you know, the next time this happens, say, you know, yes, Lord, I'm here. And then Samuel gave him, I'm sorry, Eli gave him a little bit extra of a task saying that whatever he tells you, you have to tell me word for word or, or else. You know, if you don't, you know, it, it won't be good for you. So the Lord comes for the fourth time to Samuel and uh, calls him. And Samuel says, you know, Lord, I'm here. And then the, the Lord God gives Samuel uh, this message. And remember that Samuel, at this point in time, is like a little kid. We don't know specifically his age, but since it starts out saying that um, Samuel didn't know the Lord, you know, obviously Samuel would have been on the younger side. And so the, the Lord, God, gives Samuel, you know, this mis message. See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day, I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming the Lord and he did not restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel understood that this was obviously a message of bad news for Eli, and in the Old Testament term, Eli's house, Eli's relatives, that you know, no sacrifice was going to be able to cover for the sins of Eli and Eli's family, specifically his sons. And Samuel you know, goes back to bed, and then he gets called by Eli in the morning, and Eli says, Sam, you know, Samuel, my son. And Samuel says, here I am. And then Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything. That Eli's house, in a sense, was, was done, was being cut off. And that nothing, no sacrifices could atone you know, for this, for this blasphemy that Eli's sons had done. It concludes then about Samuel. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba, those were the traditional, Dan was the northernmost point of the kingdom of Israel. Beersheba was the southernmost point of the kingdom of Israel that everybody in Israel would know that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. So we have here and elsewhere in the Bible the call of a prophet. Uh, we don't necessarily think of Samuel as a prophet. You know, if we hear Isaiah, if we hear Ezekiel, if we hear Jeremiah, if we hear, you know, Micah, we, we know these prophets and we know their written word. And we understand, you know, what, what these prophets were. Um, and here we have, though, in the beginning of the book of Samuel, for Samuel, we have the call of 
of Samuel, and we are told that he is a prophet and that they knew that he was a trustworthy prophet. If you think about it, the people of Israel would have trouble, as we have trouble today, knowing if somebody's telling the truth or not. We listen to, you know, whether it's newscasts or politicians, and we hear a lot of words, and we aren't really in a position very often to be able to judge them and, and know this one's telling the truth, this one is not. And Samuel and the people of Israel had the same problem. There were more prophets than what we have in the Bible, but they weren't the prophets that, let's say, God had called. <coughs> they weren't the prophets that were really speaking God's word, but were maybe speaking the words of somebody else, somebody who paid them, and we see this in the Old Testament, somebody who paid them, these other prophets, to say something. So we are told right off the bat that, you know, Samuel is a prophet who could be trusted. And we're reminded again about the word prophet, that, you know, it's a word that means messenger. It doesn't mean, you know, uh, the, the prophets, there might have been some uh, an intent of, I'll say, foretelling the future, but mostly, you know, the vast majority of time, that's not who the prophets were. They brought God's word to the people that they were speaking to, the people of their own time and place. You know, it was God's messenger to the people to make people closer to God. So here we are in Epiphany, and again, and I'll probably say it every Sunday of Epiphany, that Epiphany means to be made known. And so we know from Samuel, if we go on, Samuel is actually one of the biggies in the Old Testament. Moses would obviously be number two in the Jewish uh, traditions. Elijah is certainly number two. Uh, but Samuel might be the third most important person in the Old Testament. When the people of Israel were sort of tired of being downtrodden and oppressed, they wanted a king. And who did they go to? They go to Samuel. Samuel, we want a king. Uh, and Samuel anoints Saul, finally, but Samuel's telling the people, no, you don't want a king. Kings are nothing but trouble. And the people are there, but the nations around us, they all have a king, and look how powerful and strong they are. We want a king. And Samuel says, you know, kings, what they're going to do is they're going to levy armies, they're going to raise taxes, they're going to do all these things. And the people said, we don't care. We want, we want a king. And so Samuel, again, as, as the important person in Israel, um, anoints Saul to be the first uh, king of Israel. So Samuel is quite, the, is quite the Old Testament figure. And for us, he's quite the model of what it means to be a prophet. Samuel told the word of God to Eli. And it was a word that was not uh, a pleasant word for Eli. And Samuel knew this, but Samuel, as a trustworthy prophet, told Eli. We have another example, maybe one of the most dramatic moments in the Old Testament, where Nathan goes to David after David's adultery with Bathsheba. And uh, Nathan, the prophet, uh, confronts David with this and, and tells a little story. And when David hears it, he's outraged. And he says, you know, who's this man that had that took this, you know, sheep um, from, you know, this, this man's, you know, this man's flock, let's say. And as they go through it, the, the story is quite involved. But at the end of it, David's outraged and he says, who, who is this man? And Nathan, the prophet, the messenger from God, looks at David and says, you're the man. You're the bad guy. And David knew it, just like Eli knew it. They knew that they were wrong. So for us today in the 21st century, you know, 2,800 years after these events, but nothing really has changed. Instead of Samuel, it's us that God has called. Instead of Samuel getting the word of God for, you know, Eli and later in life for others around him, it's us who have the word of God for the sake of people around us. And so as we look at Samuel, I mentioned Nathan, 
um, and you know his unenviable task of going to the most powerful man in the kingdom, David, and confronting David with David's sin. You know, it's not Nathan and Samuel, but it's each and every one of us. It's all the congregations. It's all the people of God throughout the world that God has called. And so, Epiphany, making God known, we understand that that's our job. We understand that God has called us to do that. And we understand that when God calls us, when God reaches into our lives, when God empowers us to be God's messenger, we see that things change. Uh, we see that our lives change. And we see what is possible for the world when all of us work together as God's people in the world. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.